This has uh, just arrived for me. TYT MD9600. It's a mobile DMR radio. Now, I already have a, a Motorola a DM3400, which I use on DMR from the shack. But I'm lucky enough to have two shacks. I have a... Uh, a small basic setup of my partner's uh, location in the corner of the garage but what I don't have there is a DMR radio I was on the lookout for another Motorola but couldn't see any and this came up at a reasonable price so what I'm going to do with this uh, 9600 is uh, we'll test it out first to see that it's it's working as it should be and then I'm hoping to put the uh, the open firmware, the same firmware that I have on the uh, Bofeng DM1801 and the Radio Oddity GD77. There is a version of that firmware for the MD9600. There's a little bit of work involved in putting that firmware onto this radio. And uh, first I'm going to need to make sure that this 9600 is working as it should. Uh, then I need to establish uh, which um, TYT official firmware it's running, which apparently isn't that straightforward. But once I've done those things, I can back up the um, original firmware, and then I can install the uh, the open uh, the open firmware. And uh, I'll show you how I get on with this 9600 and um, what I think of it as a, as a DMR radio. I'm not going to be using it really for. Um, for VHF and UHF FM, I envisage running it into a into a demi load and uh, into the uh, the hotspot, as I say, at the alternative uh, uh, the secondary radio shack. So there's the MD9600, and uh, we'll get it out of the box, and we'll see if it's uh, if it's working before we go any further. So here's the radio out of the box. It's a second-hand radio, of course. It seems in relatively good condition. I've got it hooked up to my uh, SWR power meter and uh, demi loading the other side of the meter. And we've got the uh, the bow thing there, just monitoring. So I'm on a Simplex uh, UHF channel for DMR. Let's try keying up. And uh, there we are. I can hear myself on the bow thing. One, two, three. One, two, three, you can see there's an ID set there, there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's obviously not a genuine um, DMR ID. And on the meter, we're running just over just under 10 watts. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to key up on uh, my DMR handy and see if we're receiving. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, you can see my DMR ID coming through there, okay. So, looks like we're working. Um, as I say, I'm not familiar with the, the menu system on the MD9600. Uh, um, there's various settings here that we can... Very loud beep. Which I think we'll be looking to switch off. Um, maybe it's in the utilities. Uh, radio settings. Tones alerts. Keypad tones. Let's turn that off. See what difference that makes. That's better. Straight away. <laughs> so we've done something. But um, yeah, the next thing to do, I'm going to run through. Um, the various power settings on the radio but it, it, it looks like it's working fine it's receiving and transmitting DMR and we're just going to try and work out what um, firmware it's on and then go through the um, the update process and uh, flashing the GD cell the, the open uh, GD77 uh, firmware onto this one um, which I've seen some YouTube videos with people running um, the the open GD77 and it does it does look better um, a lot of people have criticised apparently the uh, the user interface on the MD9600 and it's not the most user friendly so I think it's uh, definitely ripe for a, a firmware update and um, as I'm familiar with the open firmware it'll make it a lot easier to use for me 
If you compare this to the screen that we saw when I unboxed the MD9600, you'll see there's something quite different. And this is because I've managed to install the open firmware, or as we often call it, the Open GD77 firmware, to this 9600. I think it gives it, a, to start off with, it gives it a clearer font and a clearer screen. Uh, clearer layout but that's only a very small part of it anyone that's used the open firmware will know that it transforms the radio certainly in the sense of the GD77 the Bofeng 1801 and the RD5R and I think it will be the same with this 9600 I haven't got much experience with the 9600 other than powering this one up for the first time but I have read a number of complaints about the user interface being quite unfriendly and uh, you know quite difficult to operate the radio and program it and the open firmware will deal with a lot of those issues as we'll see. Um, now obviously this isn't a handheld so some of the button presses are different in order to access some of the features of the open firmware. Uh, in addition to the um, P1 to P4 buttons on the front we have uh, a single uh, orange button here. We have a band uh, escape button here, an enter button, and then up down keys. These will all play a part. And uh, we also have a multifunctional uh, keypad microphone. And to access some of the Open GD77 features, we need to use the mic. In fact, if we press the AB button on the mic, it takes us into uh, the menu. You see just like that and um, anyone familiar with the open firmware will recognize the menu instantly uh, we have various options let's just have a look at these uh, we've got um, beep volumes mic levels for separate levels for FM and for DMR so on and so forth. We just go back into the menu, back into the options again. We have um, an ability now to uh, change the brightness of the display, which I don't think was a feature that the radio had before. And take the backlight right out. We can have it relatively dim so forth right up we can set a minimum brightness and just scroll through the menu with the up and down key we can change the contrast of the display so it's uh, very pale there difficult to read right up to um, the other end which is also difficult to read so we want it somewhere in the middle probably about uh, 20 seems about right we can set a timer we can invert the color which you could do on the handsets as well um, not something I particularly want to do but it may suit some people uh, there's various features that you can set okay um, now the biggest advantage to me perhaps is that I can share a cold plug between this MD9600 my Radio Oddity GD77 my Bofeng DM1801 and indeed my RD5R handsets all use now with the same code plug I'll show you in another video how much easier the open firmware is to program comes with its own CPS its own programming software but because of the way that you can switch between talk groups just by pressing the up and down buttons We can direct enter a talk group by pressing the hash key on the microphone here. And we can just key in our talk group. Let's say 23526 which is a Hubnet talk group. We enter that and we're there on Hubnet. What this means is when you're programming up your hotspot, you actually only need one channel in your code plug. And from that one channel, you can scroll up and down the various contacts that are in the system. Or 
or you can, as I say, you can press the hash key and direct enter a talk group of your choice. It's just a lot easier than having to program a channel for each talk group as we used to have with some of the um, some of the radios.